part three, adding a file server to our Unreal Labs Corpse network as we continue uh, building our our little small business network out. Oh, there's a blueberry. He's gonna <laughs> he's gonna join us today. Um, that's the lab cat. Um, cool. Yeah, let's jump in. All right, so we're sitting on uh, file server one. I did uh, clone this from a DC, so I had to run uh, like a sys prep, and it's not before it was a DC, so I had some trouble there. But um, haven't run sys prep in a while, and I was like, well, where is that at? Um, so it is just a basic server. Um, let's go to local server here. We need to do some things on our on our chart here. We need to at least rename it to. We want to rename it to file one. We need to assign it an IP address. And then the file server role is kind of already built in, but we need. I would like to add a couple things there before um, before we move on to the company share. So let's let's do that in this part of the video here. Let's go back over to uh, file one. So we definitely need to uh, rename this thing. Uh, we'll do all caps. And before I restart it, I am going to assign its IP, which was ten ten one hundred twenty with a two five five two five five, so a twenty four ten one hundred one. Our default gate gateway in there. At least give us some communication and then we'll do a quick restart here. And then we'll do uh, the domain join. Log back in as local administrator. The local server and I am going to just test connectivity just to verify so we're not troubleshooting that but let's test 100.10 I just want to make sure I can I can ping the DC that looks good and we'll go to work group and we'll change and we're gonna specify the domain name unreal labs dot local even though it should have been unreal court but oh well Oh, we got a problem. Maybe I spelt it wrong. Hold on. I don't think I did, but we'll see here. You know, I'm going to turn this IP version 6 off too. not be contacted all right what's going on there Yeah, doesn't seem to know. All right, there's the gateway. I was being, you guys probably caught that, but uh, being an idiot there, I should have had one. Instead of one, I should have had 10. It did not, it was looking at the default gateway as a DNS host. So let's, let's go back there again. Sorry about that. 
See, sometimes when you're just going too fast. All right, that's what it should be. That should be fairly fast. All right, there we go. All right, let's do a restart. And we should be on the domain. We'll hit other user here. <clears throat> and we're gonna log in with the administrator account. We can go to, uh, I just wanna go to Active Directory on the domain controller and we should see a computer populate in here called file one, yep. All right, and I'm going to move that into this file server's OU I have because uh, we'll be doing some group policy on that later. All right, so that looks good. And yeah, I know, sysprep. So the file server and storage role is already installed, but I do want to add some some extra features that we're going to use down the real, down the path of some other videos. So we'll go manage and add roles and hit next and next. Make sure I'm file one. Hey, Blueberry, what are you doing? And we'll do uh, file and storage services. That's what we're looking for. And I'm going to add a couple things. So file server right there. We'll check that box. Um, I do want, yeah, we'll put the resource manager in there because there will be some things I'm sure we'll want. And I do want to do a server for NFS because we're going to be adding an, a Linux box and I want to be able to share uh, with the Linux machine. And that looks all good. DFS we won't be dealing with. Let's see. Yep, there we go. And then features. I don't think I have any features I really want to be adding here. I could cover like... Just talk about briefly here this SMB one. If you if you did any SMB one, it's it's available for you to click. It's not on by default. So if you got an old like 2008 server or something, you need to communicate with or you know an XP box or something. You could um, you'd need to enable this and then SMB for server. Uh, it's not recommended. It's you need to turn it off really. But um, some sometimes in some production environments you need a old protocol. All right, so yeah, that looks that looks all good to me. We'll hit next and install. And we shouldn't have to restart on this, but we'll see. All right, we'll hit close and we should have our file roles here. We don't have any shares quite yet. All right, so let's, um, I'm gonna pause the video here and we'll pick up on uh, the next part. We'll be doing the file shares here real quick and uh, access based enumeration. We'll get those workstations verified. Um, so I'm going to meet you up here in just a second. All right. So let's uh, jump into creating a company share and then let's create an accounting and engineering folder uh, for our two users here, Cindy Williams and John Baker. And let's do some basic access for them. So uh, we'll go through just tightening it down to where, you know, accounting can't get into engineering and engineering can't get into accounting. Or maybe we'll just do read, but uh, I want to 
then we'll test on these workstations here. And the last step here uh, after this, we'll deal with uh, GPOs uh, for the mapping network drives. So back to file one, and I'm gonna create a new folder. I'm gonna call it uh, company files. All right, and then I'm gonna create another folder in here, counting, and I'm gonna create another folder, engineering. All right, so we'll go back up to company files, and we're, I'm gonna right click that, hit properties, and then sharing, I'm gonna go advanced sharing, and I'm gonna click this share this folder, and then I'm gonna do permissions. I'm gonna get rid of this everyone group because I just don't want everybody um, including guest accounts to to be able to you know read this share so I'm going to remove that and I'm just going to add domain users so everybody should be able to see it I'm going to do change and read and then I'm going to do domain admins and I'm going to have them with uh, full access and we could actually create some groups let's do that right now let's create an accounting group and an engineering group then we can actually kind of get rid of, um, you know, domain users. So let's, yeah, uh, we don't have to get rid of domain users, but let's go create those groups here. So under accounting, oh, I do have my, it looks like I already, I created them ahead of time because that's what I wanted to do. That's, it's actually the preferred method. So I, I did create the accounting group. Uh, to do that, you'd right click new group. Uh, we can call this one just test really quick. And then to add a user, you would, you know, double click on it, members, and then you would add a member. So we can add Cindy Williams here. It's not going to hurt anything. So Cindy Williams is now a member of, of test. So, and she's also right now a member of, of accounting. And then I'm probably sure I created one for engineering. Yes, I did. And there's the members for John Baker. So let's go back to our file server. And, uh, since we have domain users, we're actually kind of okay on that, but just so you could see that. Um, and then I'm just gonna do accounting at the same time. You can add, oops, if I can spell. So we added both of those at the same time and I'm going to uh, set those permissions. Verify. Always verify. All right, looks good. So now if we kind of go into accounting and engineering, let's do, uh, I just want to show where you could check uh, permissions. So <clears throat> let's go into engineering or right click on engineering and go to properties. And let's go to security and advanced. And there's a tab here called effective access and we can run you know, users against this. So we'll do uh, Cindy Williams. And let's see what access she has on the engineering folder currently. So she has quite a few permissions here. So she can, you know, execute files, list the folders, read. Uh, she does not have necessarily write permissions directly related to it, even though I'm going to show you she's, she's definitely going to be able to write to it. Um, and that's because of we're just using share permissions right now uh, uh, instead of doing any kind of NTFS on the back end. So if we if we jump over to Cindy Williams here, she's workstation uh, two, I believe. Yes. Let's uh, make sure we can ping 20 just so we make sure we have communication. We'll whack whack file one. Yeah, and there's company folder, so we'll open that up and let's go into engineering and let's try to create a folder. And we can, just like I said before. So let's fix that. Let's let's do some changing of some permissions here. So John Baker will be able to do the same thing with with the accounting group. So let's go into the file server again. <clears throat> and what we're gonna wanna do is, since I wanna use NTFS, I mean, I could have shared, you could, like you could have shared, you know, accounting out by itself. 
and on the sharing permissions you could have you know just gave you know accounting to engineering you know read access but i i highly recommend you because we want to do access based enumeration so we, we actually want to change that we want to be at where like you know john baker logs in and he can't even see the accounting folder because he doesn't have permissions to it to even read it so we'll we'll all right we'll start with engineering and we'll go to properties here uh, and then let's go to security, the security tab, and let's click on advanced. And we could, um, like, you could actually edit from here too if you want to just, you don't actually have to have advanced. Um, but I want to show you that I want to disable inherited permissions. I, I don't want the permissions from the root of uh, company files flowing down into other folders. So I'm going to, I'm going to break that inheritance right here. So I'm going to click on Disable Inheritance, and I'm going to convert the inherited permissions. So I'm going to be able to keep them, and we'll do the opposite. We can do the opposite. I can show you what that looks like with the with the counting. Uh, and I'm going to add, uh, since this is engineering, I'm going to add the engineering folder here, or the group, I mean. And I'm going to give them modify and write, not full control. <clears throat> And then it'll apply to this folder, subfolders, and files. So we'll hit OK on that. And I'll apply it. And I'm going to remove uh, the users, uh, the local users of file, of the file server here from access. We do have the administrator account uh, of the local server in there, but I want to remove these. Uh, and then creator owner, that's going to have full control of what they're doing. Um, we could remove that too and systems full control that's okay and then the other thing I'm going to add is we do want accounting to just read right so we'll add accounting and we'll just keep it on the read execute they need list to see the contents and then read um, so we'll, we'll keep those and that's like I said this folder subfolder and files and we'll hit okay and I'm just going to add one more here because I don't want to lock myself out ever just domain admins, just that group, and I'll give them full control. And now we'll hit OK. OK again, and then if we check that, I just like to verify, we'll go to properties, security, and then those are our new settings here. So if we slide over to uh, Cindy Williams, and go file one into company folders. Let's see what she can do now in engineering. She shouldn't be, it's like she's able to list it now, but we shouldn't be able to create a folder. <clears throat> so that folder has been denied yet. So we're, we're good there, but she still should have full access uh, to accounting. And she does, or not full access, but uh, at least be able, she's able to create folders there. Um, Give me one second here. Sorry, I had to uh, boot up the uh, Windows 11 machine. I didn't notice it was off. Whoops. So let's check uh, John Baker here <clears throat> and see what he can do. company files and engineering. So Cindy Williams was not able to create a folder, but John Baker can. And now let's just look at those permissions here. Let's just go to properties and we'll go to security. And we can see, uh, you know, what groups uh, have access. Now, the other kind of thing we did here is we, we took that creator owner off. So now what that does is if we wanted John Baker to be able to control his own permissions on this file, like he could he could lock out, let's say, another engineer, or he could just uh, you know modify permissions on a on a folder or file. We would have kept that in because um, he created this folder, and then if another user created, they could manage their permissions. That's more of a policy thing that you have to decide if you're willing to let them do. Um, you got to remember that users can you know get into stuff and and do things they that that lock themselves out. So. Um, like they're not going to be able to add permissions here uh, to that folder. 
anyways, we don't have to go down that full road, but we just wanted to, I just wanted to verify John Baker uh, could, could make a folder there. So let's slide back over and let's do the same thing with accounting. Under security here, advanced, and let's disable inheritance. I'm not going to remove all of this. We'll just do a convert. I, I know I said I would, but let's uh, keep it simple for this. We can we can always have an advanced file and sharing video if we need to. So let's click in. Let's add accounting, right? Start with that group first, and we'll do modify and write. Um, that looks good. And we will add in. Uh, actually, engineering is not going to be a part of it. So we don't want engineering to see this, but we do need to, to remove. Whoops. We need to remove these permissions here. And then I'm going to add, like I always do, domain admins, just in case. I always want full control. Now, the local administrator would have full control from this server, but I want the, the full domain con uh, users, the full, not domain users, full domain admins. If you were a member of the domain admin group that the domain administrator's account is a member of, uh, I know this gets confusing, so. So I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible. Um, so yeah, that looks good. And then creator owner, uh, we will remove that also. And we'll hit OK on that. I'm just going to verify that those were kept. All good. So now if we, we go over to Cindy. So that's not Cindy. Cindy's on two. There we go. So if we go into engineering, we try to make a folder. She's denied there, but she can at least read it. If we go to accounting, she should have full rights to that and create her own folder. And if we check properties on that and security, you would seal the, the groups are filling in here. Just give me one second. Yeah, there we go. Should be what's inheriting down. So these permissions are inheriting. Uh, from a, the accounting folder, not from company files. So we split that out. Um, let's slide over to John Baker. So John Baker should have no access uh, to accounting right now. So we can just verify that. And yep, John Baker is not able to get into accounting. So let's add one more thing to this real quick. Um, we want to we want to kind of share. The, well, actually, we did the permissions, but I want to hide that folder from from John Baker like he doesn't really even need to see accounting um, so let's go over to file one and we can actually go into file and storage services and then if we click on where is that shares let me refresh this real quick all right there is company files which we want we can right click this and we're going to go to properties and we're going to hit click on settings and then we're going to enable this access based enumeration here so we're going to say yep i want that enabled on company files and we'll hit okay and if we slide back over to i'm just going to log these guys off for a second sign out john baker Sign out Cindy Williams. So right now, John Baker should not be able to see, since he doesn't have read permissions to that folder, he should not be able to see accounting. Man, it's spelled today. There we go, file one. And we'll see company files. And if he opens that up, the only folder he's going to see is engineering. So that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I hope you hope you like that. Or if you, you know, definitely use that. I don't think a lot of people do, but it's super handy that they can't really see the folder. So they can't even really play with it. I mean, it, it really is there. It's just, like I said, it's just hiding it from uh, John Baker. So uh, let's drop into Cindy Williams, though. Let's test her out. And she should be able to see both folders. And then we'll move to the next part of uh, creating a GPO to map some drives. We 
grab a little coffee there. All right, so file one, right? File one. We click on company files. Now she's able to see both because, like I said, she does have read uh, to engineering. She still can't write in here. She still can't create folders. But at least if there was documents that that uh, you know Cindy needed to get to, she could actually see them. So cool beans. That's uh, pretty awesome. So let's move on to uh, the GPO. I'll catch you over there. All right, so we're back on the domain controller and we are going to open up group policy management. So we're gonna to hit tools up here at the top. We're gonna to go to our tools and we're gonna be looking for uh, GPO, so group policy management. I'll kind of expand this out on real labs and then group policy objects. And I already have one I created here, but let's delete this. And I'm not gonna get into the full details of group policy, but this is a just an easy way to, you know, map folders. You could definitely do it with a login script like the old days, um, which is pretty dang easy, but uh, group policy is super neat. So we'll, and this is the way it's pushing anyway. So we'll hit new. And I'm going to call it drives. We'll hit OK. And I'm going to edit this. So right now I, I haven't tagged it for any kind of link. So I haven't associated this yet with any with any locations yet. But it is a tied to authenticated users. So anybody, once I tie this to a organizational unit or a group, you know, you can filter this based off groups if you want. But we need to tie it to a to a location here, either the root of the domain for everybody or a specific OU. So let's right click and hit edit. I know I keep on talking. And this is gonna be a user configuration, not a computer configuration here. We're gonna to go to preferences and drive maps. So that's what we're looking for. And we're gonna hit, we're gonna right click in this white space and we're gonna click new map to drive. <clears throat> and there's a couple selections here, like we could create a drive. The The default is update, and that's the way I would leave it. Um, if you need to replace a drive through group policy, like uh, they don't need the Z drive or whatever, at that point you could actually be doing some replacing. I highly recommend you look this up. Um, I could spend a video just covering these options here. But currently we're just going to use update, and then we're going to hit the location of file one and it's going to be company files. I believe I have to, let me, I think I need to throw that in quotes, I'm pretty sure. I shouldn't, I hate when I do that too, I shouldn't have shared this out. Just a tip, I don't like spaces in my shares, um, but that was that was my bad. Um, so company file, we'll label it as company files. And we're going to pick the drive letter to use. So we'll, we'll, I'm going to choose H for like a home drive. And this would give you an option. We could connect to a different user if we wanted. Um, you could, and I have a video on this actually on how to map drive. So I'm not going to get too far into it. But uh, like I said, you can, I think I even break down those options up top. Um, so if you wanted to hire show all drives, you've got some options here and then common folders you can actually you can actually target, which I think is pretty neat. This is this item level, excuse me, item level targeting. So you could add some extra, not just like, oh, it's this person. It's got to he's got to be this person. And he's got to be on this type of machine. So that's that's kind of a neat thing. So we'll hit we'll hit apply in there and OK. I'm hoping that'll map with the quotes. I'm not quite sure. I should have I should have renamed that share. We might do that here in a second if it doesn't work. Um, just so I don't troubleshoot it while you guys have to watch. So there's our group policy. I'm going to close that. So that's all we needed to make to to change in there, and we can look at the details. Or excuse me, the settings, and that'll give you a report uh, of what settings we we actually chose. All right. And so, like I said, we need to actually now tie this to, you know, some of our organizational units here. 
So we've got accounting and we've got engineering. I'm going to actually tie it just to the root. So everything that's underneath, you know, Unreal Labs, you know, accounting, engineering, possibly sales down the road for that other, uh, they're, they're always going to get this, this map drive. So, and we can modify that later. If, if you need to tighten it up, you definitely can. So let's link this. So what I, let me slow down a tad. So I'm right clicking link an existing GPO because we created it. You could create a GPO here and link it just all at once, but we've already created it. So it's under Unreal Labs Local and we're gonna choose Drives and we're gonna hit OK. And now you'll see our GPO is tied up here. So our location is that and for all authenticated users. All right, let's uh, let's let's give it a shot. So we're over on uh, Cindy Williams. Let's just log her in and see what happens. It might take a couple reboots <clears throat> for the GPO to kind of show up. I think I have um, the Windows 11 machine already rebooted. I just wanted to reboot one of them real quick. So um, I tested this when I did do a start. I had to, I. I shortened our company file share. I just took that spacing out of it and and did redid the the modification of the GPO there. Um, well, I don't really put spaces in my shares, but uh, that was kind of dumb that I did that. So just wanted to give you a little asterisk there. So if I open this PC uh, and do a refresh here, do we get anything? No, we did not. Well, that's too oh there it is just took it a second oh, okay all right so it, it took still a second to run through the uh gpu the drew policy processing let's see what happens on cindy williams here and she got a two okay so it just took a took a second um and like i said i did i did the name is still split but uh the, the actual share um i did tighten i did tighten the name up um but let's click on H and then uh, Cindy Williams, like I said, she had, or like we configured before, she had read uh, for engineering. Uh, so that still looks good. Uh, and if we jump over to uh, John Baker, we should just see engineering, which is what we do see. All right. Well, that, uh, that finishes this up. Um, we were able to get our file server installed into uh, the Unreal Corp network or Unreal Labs network. Um, we covered, uh, renaming the server again, which we've done a bunch IP addresses. We've got that server role. We've got a couple extra that we've added that we're going to do down the road. We created that company share, um, did some access based enumeration, which I have another video on. I can link in the description if you want to see the older one, um, which is just more to that point and how to map drives. Um, either use an NTFS batch scripts or the GPO, which is, uh, kind of the way to go. Um, yeah, I really appreciate you guys, uh, sticking around. Like I said, I did tighten up that, that share name, um, just to make it easier. Like I, it's rough when you have, especially if you're scripting things, uh, to have spaces in your share names. That was, that was dumb of me to do that. Um, so stick around for the next video. Like I said, we'll be covering firewalls. We've got those 40 gates we got to configure. And, uh, I think I'm going to combine these two. So we'll do an IPsec tunnel at the same time so we'll just kind of get these both nailed out in uh, one video um, so we'll do just a basic configuration get some internet for the lab and uh, we'll do the kind of the same thing for the remote site our prep remote site and then we'll just do a 40 gate ip sec tunnel which is super easy to do um, they're wizards or even with a cli is just just hands down awesome so i uh, hope you'll stick around for the next videos appreciate it